So, good morning from the Lofoten crossing day six. I'm in Nap here, Nap Harbor. That's where the day six is supposed to start. Uh, I took the bus to here. Uh, it leaves the Lake Ness at 9.20. It was the first bus on a Sunday. It took like 15 minutes. And you have to take the bus because that bus goes through a tunnel under the ocean. So you're not allowed to cycle there or to walk there. So you have to hitchhike or get your bus or taxi or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, arrival was not so good because um, I told the bus driver, okay, I want to just go, want to go to nap. And with me was, a, was another guy uh, with a bicycle and he put the bicycle in, into the bus, yeah, at the bottom, in the luggage compartment, his whole bike. So he was the only one with a bike. And he also said, yeah, I just want to go to Nap. And so we had two people going to Nap, uh, two tourists, <laughs> one with a big backpack and one with a bike. And bus driver said, yeah, yeah, okay. So we started the bus ride, everything fine. And uh, arrived in Nap and the bus did not stop. And then we realized, okay, shit, the bus driver is completely ignoring us. Uh, we have to press a stop button uh, ahead of us. There, there, yeah, were stop buttons. Didn't see anyone else pressing that before. <laughs> so, yeah, we pressed, or I pressed it, and then got out at the next stop, which was then like 15 mi minutes walking from me on the main road. It was fine because it's Sunday morning, it was not much traffic, but still, uh, it wasn't would have wished a nicer start of the day than not walking 15 minutes on asphalt. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the bus driver was still sleeping or I don't want to I don't want to believe that he was a mean person. He probably just forgot he was thinking about other things. And it's our responsibility then <laughs> if there are stop buttons we should know to press the stop button or at least remind the bus driver, hey we want to get out next stop. Anyway, I'm here now. It's the harbor of Nap. And what else to say? Yeah, yes, about yesterday, as expected, it was raining the whole day. It started late morning and it stopped raining this morning just before the bus left. So I would say it rained like almost 24 hours without a single stop. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes less. So it was. Yeah, the forecast was 100% right and I'm, it was the best decision to not hike yesterday. Instead, I yeah, just, I slept, I recovered, I did not do anything. I just pff, sat in my uh, Airbnb, uh, in the kitchen, had coffee, was uh, sleeping again. So uh, definitely my muscles, my leg muscles needed it because before, whenever I, I went to bed in the evening and the muscles cooled down, everything started to hurt. Yeah? The, the whole leg started to hurt. And now I think it feels a bit better. Fingers crossed. Uh, so, today's destination will be uh, Nusfjord. It's a you know, very popular uh, tourist fishing village, I'd call it. Uh, very pretty. I believe and it's going to be from here uh, around if the map is correct around 18 kilometers with a elevation change of 500 550 meters and should the whole day or the whole hike without break should take between six and eight hours I'm not sure so I, I calculate 10 hours 10 to 12 hours it's so if it's it's like uh, 10 15 now if I arrive there, as usual, at 9 p.m., I'm all right. <laughs> uh, set up tent, have dinner, and I'll be fine. Uh, I worry about um, the trail condition, because as it has rained the whole day yesterday, things, the, yeah, things will either be muddy or the rocks will be slippery. So I hope there will be no dodgy, crazy uh, climbing passages because yeah, that would not be 
safe and not be nice. Again, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, enough talking. Uh, I'm getting ready here now. Uh, I'm already have to put on sunscreen because the sun came out just when the bus stopped here on this island. Suddenly it opened up and the sun is out. So it's perfect timing. So, and it's already, it's, it's like I said, it's 10 a.m. and the, it's, the sun is already burning. So I already need uh, sunscreen. We put on sunscreen, get the sticks ready, have a sip of water and then let's go. I am speed. Okay, first impression, as expected, it's very muddy, but so far so good. And now I'm looking for those wild camping spots that are supposed to be here somewhere. At least that's how it is described in the Lofoten, on the Lofoten Crossing website. It says it's you just leave the uh, the harbor area and then you will immediately find many spots on the left hand side. So let's check. At the moment this looks a bit uneven. <laughs> now, if I see something I will film it. Okay, just spotted some camp spots. Spotted some camp spots. Yeah, quality content. Um, yeah, it's actually on some maps it's already marked as a bivouac. bivouac. It's a maybe a French word for campsite. I will show you on the map. Uh, I did not film there because there were already people. It was a couple camping there and having breakfast. So I did not put the camera on them. But basically, yeah, it's correct. If you see it on the map, uh, the path splits. There's a very steep uh, rocky section, as you can see here above me. Yeah. And you can go either go up there and cross the section uh, above or if you want to find the campsites you have to go down here and then it's a bit of yeah getting into the bushes i'd say it's not obvious but it's here yeah. so the original itinerary as i've mentioned in an earlier video already is oh, okay mud yay mud <laughs> okay second try so the original itinerary as i've already mentioned in an earlier video uh, suggests that you on day five you arrive in Lake Ness in the afternoon like i did do your shopping whatever you need and then uh, catch one of the latest buses. I think there's one at 5 p.m. and one at 9 p.m. Catch a later bus here to Nap, and then you can wild camp here. That then you can avoid uh, having to find accommodation at Lakeness because there's no campsite, and then you have to use Airbnb, guest houses, something like that. Uh, it goes all the way down to the shore. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Good thing here is these rocks are not so slippery because I don't know what it is, volcanic rock or <laughs> at least they're not slippery. It's good. Some houses there. Seems some people camped right there. The houses looks like they are uninhabited. Still, it's someone's property, so if you never know when these people arrive, and then it's just, I would avoid this, but yeah. Look at that, that's my future <laughs> along the shore. I don't know how far we go along the shore. At some point it will go inland and uphill. So, but it looks awesome.
So today I've already seen six other hikers, three couples. Or was it seven? I don't know. At least there uh, was three groups. Uh, two are uh, like one couple is in front of me. I gave them a bit of distance. And they go my direction, obviously. Or same direction than I do. And the others are behind me and they all were putting their tent together. So I don't know yet what direction they're going. If they also go this direction or they head to Lekness. We'll find out. It is very humid. So I'm sweating and I'm puffing. But of course it has rained the whole day yesterday. Everything is wet and now the sun comes out. Now humidity goes up. Kind of hard to hike in. I'm happy about every little breeze. <laughs> mud, mud, mud. Boop. Okay. Beautiful path so far, beautiful. It's the White House where we saw those other campers. So far no one has overtaken me. The other couple I see sometimes at the horizon. I don't know. I sh should have, should think that, or should expect that after a day off and two nights of sleeping in a normal bed that energy levels are high but it's not really the case I feel a bit low in energy don't know why actually back, the backpack does not feel heavy so that's good but the back muscles are recovered but the legs feel tired and overall the body feels tired my knee started hurting already when I had to walk those 15 minutes on the road because of the wrong bus stop so, knees hurting, everything is a bit low in energy. I don't know, I go very slow. Just hope that. Yeah. Levels go up. <laughs> because it's beautiful, I want to enjoy it. At the moment, I'm, I don't know. Do you know that feeling? Like, me, me, me. That's the feeling. It's a pity because it's really, really, really nice here. Maybe I need to motivate myself. I'm speed, I'm speed, and now you. I cannot hear you. Okay, thank you. Very cool, the bar so far, because first time that it is a coastal path. Yeah, normally it goes into the mountains, up and down, or in forest. I don't know. And here it's for for I don't know over two hours now along the coast. Something very different, very nice, very quiet again. No other birds, just the seagulls. Many waterfalls here. So water is the least problem you have here. There's so many streams. You can fill up a water bottle every 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Looks like there are actually two houses there. Interesting. Yeah. There's a big waterfall.
Hello, how are you doing? Enjoying your day in the shade? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so fortunately we don't have to climb up there. Instead, it goes here into this little tunnel, or tunnel, belly. On the map, this looked very scary because of the. I could only tell. Okay, it's very steep there, very red, and the path was going right at the edge of it. But now it makes sense. <laughs> it's just. We are right next to it. With a little bit of path exploring finally found the bridge here it's not so obvious where the path wanted me to go yeah. slipped a couple of times again of course Neat. Yeah, part of the deal here such a clear water crazy Yeah, the bridge. Ah, made it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I slipped at one spot there downhill, and I slipped on a step where I thought, okay, this is completely safe. Didn't even think about that there's a problem. And that's where I slipped. Yeah? So it shows me you have to be so 100% focused here. One wrong step, you slip. And with this big backpack, it means to lose balance. Boom, on the ground. <laughs> So many cool places here to camp, but because for me it's way too early. Uh, it's almost 2 p.m. now. I think I've done maybe one third of the of the 18 kilometers. Now I see a steep climb ahead of me. Ah, relatively steep, but uh, it goes up there somewhere. Doop. Oh, look at that one. So far, can't really complain about the path. I expected it to be way more muddy and slippery after the rain yesterday. Well, it's pretty much most of it's already dry again. It looks dry. And I think other parts that are muddy and wet, they're always muddy and wet. And it has nothing to do with the rain yesterday. Interesting. Now approaching what seems to be a very steep passage. Probably need my hands there. <laughs> I can see red dot, that's correct. Yeah. I've just overtaken. Uh, the other group it was not a couple, it was two guys. They are having lunch over there, they're cooking, so I overtook them. I'm pretty sure they will overtake me again later. But first, let's get up there. Yeah, definitely needs hands and feet here. Well, feet, of course, but also hands. <laughs> Good climbing here, but it's fun, it's not difficult so far. <sighs> so, there was definitely climbing. That was dodgy. I did not look down behind me. There were always solutions. 
but did not feel well. I had to go down on my knee. <laughs> Yeah, on the knee, with the knee on the mountain. Look at that. Oh gosh. Oh. Not sure how to say this. I'll just try. Uh. The amount of times already on this hike, all these days, Every day there are a couple of situations where I think, okay, if I lose balance here, if I slip, I will die, I will at least break something. Sorry, I don't want to be over dramatic, but it's, it's my feeling, yeah. I think the big backpack in this is, is a safety hazard because it's so much more difficult to climb with it and to keep balance with it. Yeah. It's already, I've, I think I've packed it very well. All the heavy things are close to the body. It's very tight, so when I swing, I know, okay, I can test this, the backpack is not swinging by itself, but still, you know, if, If you slip or you fall, it, uh, you can only catch yourself with reflexes very quick. And those reflexes are subconscious and they are trained, trained by your body, by your nerve system. And they are not trained with the 20 kilogram backpack. <laughs> That's my, my theory. <laughs> So it's definitely a huge difference to other hikes I've done so far. Like Kungsleden or Laugavigur in Iceland, West Highland Way, Scotland, all these things. It was never dangerous. It's only, yeah, it was hard work every day, sometimes very long, many kilometers, 30 kilometers carrying the big backpack but not nothing like this this is a different league and it stresses me I'm I'm honest with you it stresses me it's way 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 out of my comfort zone and I have to think about okay what if I die here sorry it's very dramatic just sharing my thoughts. Everything else here is beautiful. I don't mind carrying heavy backpack uphill, downhill, no problem. Get used to it. Today I don't feel the backpack at all. No problem. The only, only, only thing are these couple of situations every day. That freak me out. All the way down again from that cliff, <laughs> cliff side. Whew. It is quarter past three. Yeah. Does the tea mean go there or don't go there? Uh, 
Huh. See light there? Oh. Okay. Correct. And this side is a bit more clear because there are red dots here. Wow, oh. that was cool. Oh. Wow. If there wouldn't be those one or two sketchy moments, I'd say, yeah, that's, that's such a good playground here for kids. So many rocks to climb on, climb down, that little tunnel there. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> Sorry for the shaky drone footage, if there was any footage at all. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm a beginner. I just tried to film myself, but <laughs> sometimes I just have no idea where the drone is. Where is it pointing at? I could not see myself, so I hope I'm somewhere in the in the footage. <laughs> okay, so I just met a couple. Uh, they go into the opposite direction, so they they come from Newsford. Nusfjorden gave me a recommendation about where to camp if I want to camp before Nusfjord and not after. So, it might be an option if it gets too late because it would also be cool to uh, go to Nusfjord when things are open, you know, a cafe. <laughs> it's a pretty place. Yeah? And, but if I go there tonight, everything will be closed. So maybe I camp nearby and then go there tomorrow morning for breakfast. Would be an idea. Yeah then, this direction. I haven't seen anyone anymore. I, like I said, I, I overtook the two guys who had lunch just before that steep, dodgy, help me I will die climb. So I did not see them since then. I don't know if they made it. If they're just very slow, or if they turned around, at least they did not overtake me anymore. Although I had two longer breaks since then. That's very good information from the from that couple. Because my original plan was to camp on the other side of Nusfjord, coming from my direction. But there they said they came from that, that side and they could not see anything. Could not find any any good camping spot. That's why they continued through News Nusford and came a little bit along the road and then started this trail actually when and then they found something.
There in the far distance, yeah, that should be Nussfjord. No, it's not Nussfjord. <laughs> Way too early. Cannot see it from here. Bit of orientation skills was necessary here on the rocky path but together with my GPS map I figured it out. Without the map it would suck. You're always lost, you always need to find these little stone piles. Yeah, yeah there, so I guess the path is in the middle. Okay, use the beautiful stream here to fill up water. One whole liter went into me. <laughs> and then both bottles are filled up. Green one and the blue one from the supermarket. Now I should be prepared for uh, cooking dinner and breakfast tomorrow morning. But first we need to find a spot to camp. <laughs> couple camping down there by the lake. Beautiful spot, very quiet, I would say. But it's too early for me. If I camp here somewhere in this area, which is nice, uh, then I have to hike way more tomorrow, of course. And tomorrow is already 20 kilometers calculated from Nussjord. So the closer I get to Nussfjord, Nussfjord, the closer I get to the 20 kilometers. And the place the other couple recommended is, I think, three, km, three kilometers. I cannot talk anymore. Three kilometers before Nussfjord. That would make tomorrow then 23, and that's fine. Should not be more. Whew road down there must be E10 again. I think now the path goes almost all the way down and then makes a left turn and then somehow gets up <laughs> somewhere again. Arrived at the bottom the bottom and now uh, if I'm correct somehow we'll follow the cables up there up to the hill you can clearly hear the traffic from the street now not sure if the camera catches it but of course I can hear it it's very loud now after the whole day without any sound Apart from that seabirds. Alright, it's 10 to 8. 
and I hope this is the final climb for today. Then if we or I find a good camping spot very soon and then have some nice dinner. I'm hungry mm. and I'm speed. Welcome to the I am Speed Casa. <laughs> Here's the kitchen. Kitchen and also living room where people can sit. This is the bedroom. Yes. Entrance area for your shoes. Yes. Don't make anything dirty in the tent. And then yeah, get a sneak preview into the tent. Dude. So haven't quite moved in yet. <laughs> Sticks are there. Everything has a spot here. I like it. I like when things are sorted. <laughs> oh, and a nice view down there. Okay, there's a little bit of construction work going on there, but let's ignore that. The good thing is... We have electricity! <laughs> so I'm going to have a long cable and plug in there and then charge my high voltage batteries. <laughs> no, kidding. I think now, first thing, first thing first. Uh, dinner time. So, what's on the program? Today it will be... Cod. Cod and curry sauce. Yeah, gonna be interesting. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I'm happy I'm here now. Look at the view. I think tomorrow I will have to hike, probably have to hike down there somewhere. Still cannot see Nussfjord from here. Definitely tastes like fish. It's not gourmet, but wild camping gourmet. <laughs> All right, tent camera. It is 10 p.m. That is the earliest I've ever been in a tent on this trip. I'm very happy about that because I'm looking forward to 
eight hours of sleeping. Yeah, it was not so hard today, but I would say. In the beginning, I felt a bit meh. That's how I described it. Um, a bit tired, I don't know. But everything else, the legs were fine, the back were fine, shoulders were fine. Mm, so the, the backpack didn't feel so heavy anymore than before my break. I definitely got used to it. The only thing that caused problems today was the knee that started hurting like after five minutes today until the end. Yeah, it's still yeah, a bit sore and let's see how it feels like tomorrow. Good that there was not so much crazy downhill today, but tomorrow of course we'll start with the downhill down to Nusfjord. Yeah, the idea is or the plan is then to get up here, have a coffee, but maybe skip the breakfast and then head down to Nusfjord and see if the bakery there is open and they have some nice things. <laughs> Yeah, nice things to make the hike even more special. <laughs> and then, yeah, have a look around Nusfjord and then also check out down there the uh, if there are any white camping spots. If it's really true that there's nothing or if there, if I see something that, that's, that works. Um, oh, by the way, up here I saw two other tents. Yeah, there's, one tent up there, that's that summit, and one is a bit lower towards the lake. Yeah, so that's the, the, the two I have seen. They were both here already when I arrived. So, but that's fine. We are, we are all out of out of sight from each other. So it's, it's, it still has a has the feeling of wild camping and that you're alone. And, yeah. Codfish was good, surprisingly. Very satisfied. Would buy again, yeah, that's good. And yeah, now enough blah blah. I will check some emails now and uh, prepare tomorrow's hike and then sleeping time. End of day six. Yeah, thanks for watching. I am Speed. See you on day seven. A professional wild camper. <laughs> okay. Hoopa. Okay, what now? Thanks, root builders, for the help here. Now we are in the deep jungle again. <laughs> Spectacularmente. <laughs> We have to become friend, friend with the road. We have to become one. The road. I'm the road. The road is me. We are one. We are both speed. <laughs> <laughs>